ओके ऑल क्वेश्चन आर से In fact, every question produces only one result when it hears the right answer. When you hear the right answer, what do you say? Yes, I agree. If it's not the right answer, you can never say yes, I agree. You will say no, 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 no. This is not the answer. but whenever you get the right answer what do you say yes i agree yo oh, oh is that so yes so every answer is supposed to bring in a yes mind if it's correct answer isn't that so but if every answer creates more question it's an endless journey it's good it's an intellectual exercise but beyond that nothing some entertainment value that's all <clears throat> but then should there not be any question at all no no it's necessary intellectual stimulation is essential intellect is a very important part even in the most ancient scripture bhagavad gita lord krishna gives all the knowledge finally says you think discriminate decide what is best for you and then says but remember one thing <laughs> you will only i only say what is good for you and you will only pick up what i say it is very interesting between a student and the teacher and the master the dialogue the bhagavad gita everyone should read it at least once in life when the great scientists of the world they read it they said including einstein said our life is transformed because always it was said don't ask question religion faith means don't ask question blindly follow no the vedanta or yoga vedanta philosophy doesn't say that it doesn't shun the intellect it says you use the intellect use it fully but know that intellect is not all that is the truth is beyond that one step ahead of it so don't be stuck in the intellect but definitely make the intellect shine devotion and love is going beyond the intellect by satisfying the intellect how can we clear load bad karma i feel so much self judgment how i learn to love myself thank you so much lord krishna says in gita ji you cannot get rid of your own karma i will do that for you you just do your work don't worry about your bad karma that is what a guru is there for a teacher is there for don't worry about you cleansing your own bad karma of the past it will automatically go when you live in knowledge when you are in satsang when you meditate when you do sudarshan kriya all why do you do all these things this all can erase the bad karmas bad karma means what bad impressions in the mind in the consciousness if still you feel something you say okay guru ji i give it to you those botheration i drop take care of it 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 will just go okay 
why do you have so much compassion why do you not get angry at me knowing that i have repeatedly committed the same mistake and let you down i feel disgusted with myself love you guru ji don't worry don't sit and brood over the past you know when a child starts walking it falls 10 times it doesn't stop standing up because it fell 10 times till it stands up it keeps making effort so i would tell you you are doing well you keep walking at least you have the pain of the mistake that will prevent you from doing it frequently why you do some a mistake you know because you think you are getting some joy out of it you know having drugs or alcohol or smoking is bad injurious still you do it why because you feel that it is giving you some joy in fact it doesn't give you joy it just promises you of joy habits promise you some joy but never deliver you the joy and to get rid of habits bad habits you need three things either love love for something very deep strong or something big that can take you for or to a loved one you promise then you will not look look at it look that way or fear or greed fear greed or love these three things can pull you out of bad habits you know if someone say a doctor tells you if you take alcohol your liver will get damaged you can never take it you will die you will not touch it or if someone promises you if you don't drink for 40 days you are going to get a million dollar i say yeah why 40 days 45 days let me do it <laughs> to be on safe side you know <laughs> to be on safe side i don't want to lose the luck <laughs> so greed fear and love can pull you out of your bad habits someone told me that i must have my brain washed if i am not living in reality and i am listening to you i said that this is nothing wrong that i am listening listening you because i feel everything you are saying anyway answer uh, anyway my question is i feel everything you are saying anyway my question is shall i treat that person as not my friend anymore because maybe this relationship is becoming very toxic <laughs> this word brain washed is so funny to me you mean brain what means clean brain <laughs> you want to have a dirty brain a brain full of hatred jealousy anger i want a brain with full knowledge compassion understanding love this is what we are instilling what is there to brain wash you know these are some words that people would say they can just call you fraud someone says oh you are fraud you are not genuine what are their benchmark for genuineness they have nothing to say so simply they'll say you are fraud a oh, guru ji is fraud what guru ji is fraud what is that what what do you mean by that what is your benchmark for genuineness okay tell me nothing <laughs> because some things these are the things phrases you say you are brainwashed 
you have nothing to say not not to question what is to be brainwashed to asking people to be compassionate is it brainwash asking you to be free from stress have better understanding in life is it brainwash seeing life from a bigger picture is it brainwash do you see what i'm saying people will put things into a category so that you can never question them that these are some of such phrases because once you are said you are brainwashed you have nothing else to question or confront or say because it's already labeled and put aside similarly they say oh you are fraud you are labeled and you put aside you don't question a fraud person genuinely fraud 50% fraud <laughs> or 100% fraud or what degree of fraudness nothing you can't ask you can't say anything but you can label people like that he is insincere how can you call someone insincere you don't know yourself you don't know your own mind you are judgmental and you put label on others is not the right thing but at the same time i would say suppose someone your relationship they say you are brainwashed just by listening you should be deaf not listen to anybody do you see what i'm saying it's very strange so best is not to argue with them i don't say you should cut off from people i've said one thing accept people as they are so you don't need to convince someone else all about everything that you do you are doing breathing is that so bad it's a horrible thing to do <laughs> sit and do long deep breaths and do some breathing exercise and sit quiet in the deep corner of your heart relax feel happy is that a sin i tell you <laughs> there are so many misguided people who who think this way think yoga is devil what is a satanic thing people keep changing their opinions their mind and that is natural so you don't be bothered by those things you got it you smile you be loving you be friendly you know that's what i would advise you however they are whatever they do it's irrelevant what is relevant is what is our attitude how we feel you know sometimes we'll have to put ear plug and listen to people when they talk negative a lot of negative 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 anything you do will be wrong for them so what you can do there are people like that you do your best you do your 100% good to them still they'll find you are wrong that's their perception you know someone who has jaundice for him everything appears <laughs> yellow oh that's a very common proverb in india i have grown up with the concept of god not living thus a concept i never felt any love now i meet you in person and though all the beautiful knowledge and it feels like i am meeting a living god but a living god is not a concept but what i have learned is a concept a god cannot be alive my mind does not understand i know you are there i know you are through the knowledge and love but i cannot fully embrace you while you are a person i can see i can feel i can feel the divine it it even 
hurts but cannot understand. Please advise. Thank you. God is love and love is God and it is in every one of us. There is nothing that is not God because the whole creation is made up of love. So God is not a person, it is a field and it is, if it is everywhere, it is in you. If it is all the time there, it is there now, here. You are correct. People think God is somebody in the heaven he created and dead and gone. Like the way you sometimes do thanksgiving to people who have died, you treat God as someone who is gone, oh, thank you. God, we don't, people don't understand. It's a living presence. Alive right now here. That only in the depth of silence you can experience. When the mind is quiet, then you say, I want nothing. All that is only you. With this feeling when you sit, that energy, that silence, the love that is here and now you experience. <laughs> That's why when people went to Buddha, Lord Buddha, and asked him about God, he said, I won't, he won't talk. He kept silence. Buddha, Lord Buddha never spoke about God. He said, in his satsang, this was one of the things, people should not ask him about God. No question should be asked. Eleven questions were forbidden there. One of that was God. If you ask, he will not answer. Because people had it only as a concept. They think about it a lot. They think they know it without knowing. Then they argue. God said this, God said that, God this, God that. Best is to leave God to himself. He wants a break. He wants to rest a little bit. In India, God is resting on a bed of serpent. Happily. And creation goes on. So I would say, be a good human being. And time to time, be still and experience the inner peace. You will find the secret of secrets. The doors open to us. So naturally. Then you find, oh my God, this is what everywhere people were talking about. This is what is in all the scriptures. Bible, Quran, or Vedas, everywhere they say the same thing. This is true, it's here now, in me. That realization. Again, now don't think one day some realization is up. Right now, be in peace. Peace is the first step towards God. Second, joy, happiness. Third, love. These are the three steps to the home of God. Okay? So that's end of the other questions we'll see later.